This is the story of the H.L. Hundley, the first submarine to ever sink an enemy vessel. In 1861, during the Civil War, Union General Winfield Scott originates the Anaconda Plan for strangling Confederate trade. Its purpose is to control traffic on the Mississippi River and to form a blockade of southern ports. The Confederate Navy is ineffective against the Union's more numerous fleet. To combat this strategy, Private citizens are invited to apply for government approval to wage war against the Union vessels. The successful ones will be financially rewarded. In New Orleans, it is profit as well as patriotism that motivates James McClintock to devise a plan to sink Union vessels. He will design a submarine that can attack the ships undetected from below the surface of the water. He persuades Baxter Watson and Robert Barrow to invest in the venture. However, it proves too expensive for them, so additional investors are recruited, including Robert Barrow's wealthy brother-in-law, Horace Lawson Hundley. In the spring of 1862, their first submarine is completed and named Pioneer. It is launched in Lake Pontchartrain for testing. The sub is propelled by a hand crank attached to a propeller. The test is successful except for its slow speed and some minor leaks. Unfortunately, during that same spring, Union forces under Admiral David Farragut are in the process of capturing New Orleans. To keep the sub out of Union hands, it is towed to a deep part of Lake Pontchartrain where it is flooded and allowed to sink to the bottom. McClintock, Watson, and Hundley hastily flee to the safety of Mobile, Alabama with the submarine blueprints. There they team up with Thomas Parks and Thomas Lyons at their machine shop. Also working at the shop were master mechanic William Alexander and a bright Confederate lieutenant named George E. Dixon. Earlier, Lieutenant Dixon had proposed to a Miss Queenie Bennett of Mobile and they agreed to marry after the war. Queenie presents the lieutenant with a $20 gold piece as a gift which he carries everywhere for good luck. During the Battle of Shiloh, he is shot. A bullet drips into his uniform and strikes the gold coin, saving his life. The impact leaves the coin bent. He has it engraved, Shiloh, April 6, 1862, my life preserver, GED, which are his initials. Lieutenant Dixon and the others begin to build a larger and improved sub. They called the new submarine American Flyer. The sub makes several successful runs in Mobile Bay. This encourages the builders to plan an attack on Union ships off Sand Island just outside the bay. An explosive charge is trailed on a rope behind the sub. The plan is to submerge passing under an enemy vessel and pulling the explosive charge into it for detonation. After being towed past Fort Gaines to the mouth of the bay, the sub suddenly submerges and sinks. Undaunted, they do not give up. They begin building a third submarine which incorporates sleek lines and improved engineering. Water ballast tanks are used to raise and lower the sub. A propeller shaft runs the length of the sub with eight hand cranks turned manually by the crew for propulsion. A snorkel box sits atop the sub, but they cannot get it to work properly. Still, the sub has enough air to stay submerged for two hours. They name this new submarine Parpus. In July 1863, a demonstration run of the Porpoise is made in Mobile Bay for Confederate Admiral Franklin Buchanan. It uses the towed explosive charge to sink an old coal barge. It's the flag of Dixie, hoorah, hoorah. For Dixie's land we take our stand and live or die for Dixie. To the test is successful, but the towed explosive charge proves hard to control. They begin work on a new design for delivering the explosive. 
The new design has a 23 foot long pole mounted on the lower forward end of the sub. The explosive charge is attached at the front of the pole to a detachable barb tip. It will act as a ram depositing the explosive into the hull of the ship. A rope attached to the detonator sets off the explosive as the sub backs away to a safe distance. Mobile is not being immediately threatened by Union forces, so they decide to ship this latest submarine by rail to Charleston, South Carolina, which is under constant attack by Union ships. At Charleston, Lieutenant John A. Payne from the Confederate Navy, along with eight Navy volunteers, are recruited for the trial run. They enter the sub at the Fort Johnson Wharf and slowly move out into deeper water. An accident occurs when a passing steamer creates a swell flooding the submarine through the hatches which have not yet been closed. An account of this event is sent in a letter to Becky Honor by her husband who is stationed at Fort Johnson in Charleston. The letter reads, My dear Becky, you doubtless remember and perhaps you saw while in the city the iron torpedo boat which certain parties brought from Mobile to blow up the iron side. Just as they were leaving the wharf at Fort Johnson, where I was myself a few minutes before, an accident happened which caused the boat to go under the water before they were prepared for such a thing, and five out of the nine went down in her and were drowned. The other four made their escape. They had not, up to last night, recovered either the boat or the bodies. Poor fellows, they were five in one coffin. They do not give up. The submarine is recovered from under the water and given more test trials. It is now operated by the more experienced crew from Mobile. Several trial runs are successfully made, but on October 15, 1863, the sub goes down and fails to come up. The recovery team finds the submarine nose down in the mud where it had gotten stuck. All hands on the sub are lost, including H.L. Hundley. The submarine is raised from the muddy bottom and the bodies recovered. A military funeral is held for Hundley and his crew. The submarine is refurbished and renamed the H.L. Hundley in his honor. A new series of successful dives are made with the submarine. On the night of February the 17th, 1864, the submarine is ready for the real thing, an attack on an enemy ship. The target is the USS Housatonic, which sits outside the harbor about four miles away. The sub is commanded by Lieutenant George E. Dixon, one of the original builders from the Mobile shop. He carefully places his good luck gold piece in his pocket, and under his leadership, the sub makes its way on the surface toward the Union ship. At a safe distance from the ship, Lieutenant Dixon takes one final compass reading and then calls for the sub to submerge. A sentry aboard the Union ship spots the sub approaching and sounds the alarm, but the sub is already too close for the cannons to fire at it. Small arms fire proves to be ineffective. The ship tries to evade the submarine, but it is too late. The sub rams its 23-foot spar into the rear of the USS Housatonic, depositing its 136-pound explosive charge. The sub-crew then frantically backs away from the ship, pulling the 150-foot detonation rope with it. The mammoth explosion shakes both the submarine and the USS Housatonic. The warship takes only three minutes to sink. Five hands aboard the stricken ship are lost. One story states that the H.L. Hunley surfaces and signals mission accomplished to the people on shore. That would be the last time it would be seen. The sub mysteriously disappears only 650 feet from where the USS Housatonic sank. No survivors are found. It will be 131 years before the H.L. Hunley is found. Using a magnetometer, writer and archaeologist Clive Cussler with the Naval Underwater Marine Agency locates the sub 30 feet under the water off the coast of Sullivan's Island. Diving down to the bottom, they remove three feet of sediment, revealing one of Hunley's two small conning towers. 
The organization named Friends of the Huntley carefully recovered the submarine from under the water. The remains of the crew are found inside the sub, including the remains of Lieutenant George Dixon. His inscribed gold coin is found with his remains.